See, you have to have, especially, especially right now, especially some of you younger people that are out there, you have to have a vision of eternity. Once you get a glimpse of eternity, you just know you're walking it out down here. And you'll walk it on up, you know. That's why we can sing about heaven coming down. That's why we can see heaven come down. That's why we can see into different realms because we've seen that. And so you go back to this whole scenario with Daniel starting in chapter 7. And what happens is uh, the Ancient of Days shows up in the midst of the turmoil of his vision. You know, visions can create turmoil in you. And the Ancient of Days shows up. Now, I want you to grab hold of that because we're in a very strategic time where God is giving us revelation that was given. Think about William Tell in Pennsylvania. He had revelation. He knew what God wanted. He knew, I mean, William Penn, I'm sorry, William Tell, that was somebody else. <laughs> William Penn. <laughs> William Tell was okay. That, uh... He hit the mark. <laughs> he hit the... <laughs> sort of like me last night when I told off on John. You know, he, Cheryl said Mafia's been calling him all day. <laughs> trying to get him back in, you know. <laughs> no. Uh, but William Penn, think of all he spoke into this land. Think of what he spoke into this atmosphere. Think of what he spoke into this nation. But then think of what he went through. See? So we're all, we're all making our journey through. And it becomes really important that we understand that God set us in time for today. I mean, you're here for a reason. And he knows when your life cycle here ends and you transfer over into that great cloud of witnesses where you're watching down saying, you know, you go make it, keep going. If you don't, you got a better place. But we have to know that some visions carry great weight for intercession. Now, the reason I'm here is because in 1972, God showed me the 13 colonies and showed me the necessity of them coming alive again. I had had such a visitation from the Lord, and then when Pam and I came up here, I saw what the Lord was saying to me. So you're very key. But I can't say it's been easy up here, but I can also say from 1972 to now, you have made light year changes. Let's thank God for that. Goodness. And so here in this chapter, in chapter 7, the Ancient of Days is coming down to really encourage the saints and say, uh, listen, the enemy's warring with you. And it says it right here. It says that those horns were warring and he was speaking words. uh, The enemy would speak words against the Most High God and wear down the saints of the Most High. Now poke somebody and say, that's you. (laughs) And he he will intend... Now, hear what this verse says, because Daniel saw this, and later on he says, I'm going to seal this up because it's not time, but now it's time. See? And he will intend to change the times and the laws. That's what Satan uses. That's the only thing he has liberty to use, is to change time and law. And if he can get you out of timing, What he can do is start accusing you and lead you into all sorts of things. So we want to stay in timing uh, with the Lord. And they'll be given into his hand for a time. Two times and a half a time. Three and one half years. And from that, 
they're going to come out and be able to be seated in a new way. Now say that out loud. You're being seated in a way you've never been seated. What you're going through is reseating you. And that's important. Now, and that's why being here in these 13 colonies becomes so important. And that's why we need to understand this era of war. And even though we have all been through such warfare and the enemies tried to wear down our mind, our thinking process. Remember, he will speak to you so much that he wears your brain down. And he will wear down and even cause your heart to fail if he can do it. But in that, we are in an era where God is strengthening us. So uh, remember that, what he's doing. I love what Amanda came up here and shared about David. It's just time to cut certain heads off of the enemy. Because what's happening with us is a headship war. Who, who will rule? How will they rule? And we're going through this time of realignment, and the first thing he's realigning is each one of us personally. And for the Lord to tell me, I'm going to give you a gut of, a, 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 you know, I'm going to give you a gut of iron and a backbone of steel, he said, I'll realign you. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter how frail you feel. It's your spirit that withstands your infirmity. It's not your body. And what happens is the enemy tries to get your spirit so wounded that it can't withstand the thing that's trying to weaken you. And that's happened many times in the original 13 colonies. And I remember a word I gave at Peter and Tricia, and I think, uh, the team has led an intercession over that world about how God would come through just like he's doing right now. And Amanda would end up in Charleston to really set a new course in this nation. And yet last night he was saying the timing of D.C. is very key and everything that goes on there between now and July. Now, it's very, very key. And I don't travel, I don't say as much, but I'm saying that here. Between now and the end of July, D.C. is key. And it can be turned the way the Lord wants it to be turned. 